Nathan Cross, online finance editor with Estates Gazette. I'm here in Elephant and Castle today for a look through the 42-storey strata building behind me being built by Brookfield Europe. Completion is due uh, at the end of July and it is part or a key part of the major regeneration of Elephant and Castle. The 43-storey tower is Central London's tallest residential building and includes 408 apartments. 306 of the private apartments were sold off plan in 2007 before the credit crunch and recession. There are four still to be sold. This hasn't been sold. It's one of the four that's still remaining, but it's priced at two and a half million. The architects choose the colour of the carpets. Each of our purchasers have been allowed to choose the colour of their kitchen units. We're here now uh, with Justin uh, Black, Development uh, Director at Brookfield Developments. Um, Justin, talk to us about Strata. Well, Strata will and is central London's tallest residential building. Um, it's the first part of the Elephant and Castle regeneration and it's the first significant private part to come forward as part of the El Elephant and Castle regen. So we like to think we're leading where others have followed and we're setting quite a few benchmarks with this building. Now it's been nicknamed uh, the Razor. Explain, uh, explain that for us. Um, I think there's a British obsession with buildings that people either have a connection with and they want to give it a name. Um, no one knows the Gherkin as its real name, 30 St Mary Arcs. Some local residents have likened this building to a filet shave razor and that's where the razor, I understand where it comes from. Now they haven't completed yet have they? When is that all due? Uh, we will take physical um, completion of the building from the builder sometime in June and then if that we will then move our first purchaser in in July. So July, August and September will be when people actually move in. We'll have somewhere between 750 to up to 1,200 residents. Now, Brookfield bought out Multiplex in September 2000 or around 2007, late 2007. Tell us about um, some more about Brookfield's um, projects elsewhere in the UK. What, what are you up to? Um, well, Brookfield, we're a large um, asset manager, a global asset manager. Brookfield Europe is a European division of Brookfield Asset Management. We have... Um, we're what's called an integrated property model. We have we like to do everything we're involved in property in the house, and we look at assets as if we're going to be long-term owners all the way through. So, for example, in this building, we are the developer, the contractor will also manage it. Other things we're doing, we have an involvement in Cricklewood, which is a large development um, that's just going through planning right now, northwest London. Uh, Newcastle City Centre, we have a significant ownership up there in partnership with Aldersgate, where we're again a redevelopment opportunity. We own Eden Shopping Centre in High Wycombe and we also own other parts of Newcastle. What we're looking forward is we're looking um, for projects where we can imply that integrated property model, where we can do JVs with person, people. So long as we are, have a significant interest and can use our skills exp and expertise we've gained in other areas, then we're in something we'd be considering. Tell us then about um, the energy efficiency that you hope to gain from the turbines in the building. How much power will they provide? Um, each turbine will produce between 15 and 19 kilowatts of power um, in optimum conditions. Um, per annum that equates to about 7 or 8 percent of the total energy usage of the building, um, which is probably going to be the majority of the common, common area, the, the lift lobbies and, and the, the shafts, that sort of thing. If you were to equate that to a normal home, it's approximately 31 normal two-bed homes. Um, so it's a significant amount of power. This building itself shot up very quickly. Talk to us about the um, construction stages that you went through and how fast it, ha it happened. Well, it, it's, it's a typical building in London. It's um, usually a big, big, big build, very small site, um, usually has very close proximity to um, one or two um, net, uh, public transport um, or infrastructure. We're three metres off a network rail viaduct, so we're, we're, we're very close and we share a, um, a common access with five other businesses. So it, it was a very restrictive site. Um, the build itself is a post-tension concrete. Um, which gives, gives itself a, or lends itself to a certain um, self-reliance away from the tower crane because we can only ever fit one tower crane on the project. Um, we averaged a five and a five and a half day floor cycle per floor. Our longest floor, I think, our, our longest floor took 11 days. Our shortest was just under four days. So we we, we came out the um, uh, we, we topped out at 43, about 45 to 50 days ahead of program. So that was phenomenal. The uniqueness of this building is that it is the first building that's been built on the Elephant and Castle for a long time. 
to actually create this regeneration that has to happen in this area. And that's something that we personally, as architects, feel when we, if we can contribute to that, it's something that we really want to do. You know, and I know there's a lot, a lot more work to be done in this area, but we've kind of set the benchmark along with Brookfield to make sure that this actually happens.